Time to stand up and be counted. That's what we're talking about today in our service today. You know, there are times in life you have to stand. Uh, the election's coming. I think as Christians, we should be voting and be counted. And I think any Christian who doesn't vote doesn't have the right to complain about the government. Amen. I was up prior recently in the uh, beer league and uh, lovingly said the beer league. And I said to the, I said to the catcher, because I'm trying to build relationships. And I said, so catcher, what do you do in your spare time when you're not playing ball? And she says, uh, I'm go I go to the Pentecostal Bible College. My husband and I want to be pastors. <laughs> now, she didn't know that she was talking to an undercover pastor <laughs> aspiring to be an umpire. And, and, and I said, wow, that's awesome. I said, I'm a pastor too. Her name is Jenny. Jenny did not know I was an undercover pastor. But she was willing to stand up for Jesus. She didn't know. But she's willing to say she wanted to serve Jesus. You know, in our lives, there are times such as baptism where we see people standing up for their faith. Travis and Justin. Maybe a different journeys in their walk, but they both want to make it public and let people know that this is what they stand for. So we're going to just look briefly at Daniel chapter 3. Daniel's in the Old Testament after Ezekiel, and we're going to read the 30 verses of Jan Daniel chapter 3, and we're going to talk about standing up and being counted for your faith. And, and the question today is, are you standing up for your faith? Are there people in your life that do not know that you love Jesus. If that's the case, that is sad. Because if more of us would stand up for our faith and let people know who we love with all our hearts, I think the world would be a different place. Daniel chapter 3. And I have two wonderful ladies helping me with the reading. So I'm going to start. Daniel chapter 3. King Nebuchadnezzar made an image of gold 60 cubits high and 6 cubits wide and set it up on the plain of Dura in the province of Babylon. And then summoned the satraps, prefects, governors, advisors, treasurers, judges, magistrates, and all the other provincial officials to come to the dedication of the image he had set up. So the satraps, prefects, governors, advisors, treasurers, judges, and magistrates and all the other provincial officials assembled for the dedication of the image that King Nebuchadnezzar had set up and it stood before it. Then the herald loudly proclaimed, Nations and people of every language, this is what you are commanded to do. As soon as you hear the sound of the horn, flute, zither, lyre, harp, pipe, and all things of music, you must fall down and worship the image of gold that King Nebuchadnezzar has set up. Whoever did not fall down and worship will immediately Therefore, as soon as they heard the sound of the horn, flute, thither, lyre, harp, and all kinds of music, all the nations and peoples of every language fell down and worshipped the image of gold that King Nebuchadnezzar had set up. At this time, some astrologers came forward and denounced the Jews. They said to King Nebuchadnezzar, May the king live forever. Your majesty has issued a decree that everyone who hears the sound of the horn, flute, thither, lyre, harp, pipe, and all kinds of music must fall down and worship the image of gold. And that whoever does not fall down and worship will be thrown into a blazing furnace. But there are some Jews who have set over the affairs of the province of Babylon, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, who pay no attention to you, your majesty. They neither serve your gods nor worship the image of gold you have set up. Furious with rage, Nebuchadnezzar summoned Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. So these men were brought before the king. And Nebuchadnezzar said to them, Is it true, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, that you do not serve my gods or worship the image of gold I have set up? Now when you hear the sound of the horn, flute, zither, lyre, harp, pipe, and all kinds of music, if you are ready to fall down and worship the image I made, very good. But if you do not worship it, you will be thrown immediately into a lazy furnace. Then what god will be able to rescue you from my hand? Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego replied to him, King Nebuchadnezzar, we do not need to defend ourselves before you in this manner. If we are thrown into the blazing furnace, the God we serve is able to deliver us from it, and he will deliver us from your majesty's hand. But if he does not, we 
We want you to know, Your Majesty, that we will not serve your gods or worship the image of gold you have set up. Then Nebuchadnezzar was furious with Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, and his attitude toward them changed, and he ordered the furnace heated seven times hotter than usual. He commanded some of the strongest soldiers in his army to tie up Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego and throw them into the blazing furnace. So these men, wearing their robes, trousers, turbans, and other clothes, were bound and thrown into the blazing furnace. The king's command was so urgent and the furnace so hot that the flames of the fire killed the soldiers who took up Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And these three men, firmly tied, fell into the blazing furnace. Then King Nebuchadnezzar came to his feet in amazement and asked his advisors, Were there three men that we tied up and threw into the fire? They replied, Certainly, Your Majesty. He said, Look, I see four men walking around in the fire, unbound and unharmed, and the fourth looks like the son of the gods. Nebuchadnezzar then approached the opening of the blazing furnace and shouted, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, servants of the Most High God, come out, come here. So Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego came out of the fire. And the satraps, prefects, governors, and royal advisors crowded around them. They saw that the fire had not harmed their bodies, nor was a hair of their head sink. Their robes were not scorched, and there was no smell of fire on them. Then Nebuchadnezzar said, Praise be to the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, who has sent his angel and rescued his servants. They trusted in him and defied the king's command and were willing to give up their lives rather than serve or worship any god except their own god. Therefore I decree that the people of any nation or language who say anything against the god of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego be cut into pieces and their houses be turned into piles of rubble, for no other god can save in this way. Then the king promoted Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego in the province of Babylon. Wow, what a story. What a story. Shadrach, Meshach, thank you ladies, you did a great job. The background here is that the nation of Israel is overrun by Babylonian forces, and the best captives are taken away as prisoners. The best young men were taken to Babylon to be converted to the Babylonian ways. And these young men were taken and were even given new names. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. No way, no way Jewish in any way. Because of the commitment to God, these three men, young men, were baptized by fire in a fiery furnace. Today's baptism by water carries similarities to these three as they faced in their faith. Today our baptism of these two men, young men, and, and Justin and Travis, shows us that we can have some challenges if we stand up and be counted for God. So number one, let's look at the first thing we see here, a similarity. Verse 12, a desire to live differently. But there are some Jews whom you have set over the affairs of the province of Babylon, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, who pay no attention to your, you, your majesty. They never serve any other gods, and they only serve their own, and they will not worship the image set in gold. This was not their first challenge. Remember back in chapter 1, if you're familiar with the book of Daniel, there was a challenge in regards to eating defiled food. And they said, give us 10 days. Let us eat what we are supposed to eat, what we think is right before our God. And then you other people that are there, they can eat your food and see who comes out better. Well, after 10 days, they were head and shoulders above the others who ate the food of the Babylonians. So they were appointed by God into high positions because they stood for their faith. Challenge number two. Here they are asked to bow down before a foreign image. They were confronted with Babylonian ways. They had the peer pressure to bend their knee. They had a 90 foot tall, 9 feet wide statue that they were asked to worship. But they feared God more than men. And through this process, they were those who wanted to live differently. For Justin and Travis, they want to live differently. For those of us who follow Jesus today, we have to live differently. Because God calls us to a different way of life. This world is not what we're supposed to live by. It's what God says in his word. And you know someone is living differently because they follow God. And you'll see things in their life that are there that cause you to believe that. 
Romans 12 says, I urge you, brothers and sisters, by God's mercies, to present your bodies as living sacrifices, holy and acceptable to God. 1 John 2.15, it says, do not love the world or the things in the world. It's hard. It's hard to be a Christian today. But Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego knew that they had to live differently because it would matter to God. Today, are you striving to live differently or are you striving to blend in? As a Christian, God asks more of you. So the things you watch, the things you say, where you go, God is concerned because we are not to live the way of this world. Challenge number two, challenge to take a public stand, 14 and 15. So they were found out. These astrologers bring them in for an inquisition. And the king says, is it true? And he's really putting the pressure on them. And the moment of decision comes. And in our life, there are times when the Holy Spirit speaks to us and he says, I want you to talk to someone. I want you to do this. I want you to give your last $10. And we have the choice. We cave, we don't do it, or we say, I'm going to follow you, God, because I believe you were calling me to stand up, to step up. So the decision was theirs. Is it true that when all these instruments go off, and boy, aren't there a lot of instruments? I just, I just want to say that. <laughs> and I'm glad that the ladies had most of those instruments listed in their verses. But the moment of decision is, do you stand up or do you fade? And, and you have to remember, they're in the face of an angry, by the moment, more and more king who is so stuck on himself, he thinks he's the only one in the world. What do you say? What do you do? And yet, their faith of their parents, of their priests, fades because this is the moment that they decide for themselves. Do I stand or do I fold? What is it that I need to do here? We need to take a public stand today. How are you in regards to that? When people ask you certain things, do you cave? Or do you stand up for what you believe? Jesus said, blessed are those who are persecuted because of righteousness. In 5.16 he says, in the same way, let your light shine before men. Are you open? Are you willing? Share about your love for Jesus. The third thing to see here is a faith that will not budge. 16 to 18. Now you have to remember that these guys are probably 14 to 16 years old. So they were teenagers. And yet they had a faith that was strong. Verse 17, they said to the king, this king who's in probably every vein in his face was popping. He, he was red. He was like, how dare you even come before me and say you won't do what I want you to do. And in verse 17, they say, our God will save us. But even if he doesn't, we will never worship the image that you've set up. All due respect, king. I think of in the New Testament where Paul told Timothy, do not let people put you down because you're young. Because you never know where someone's faith level is. I've met lots of young people who would put older people to shame because they're willing to stand up and be counted in their faith. I remember when I was at Sunshine Ridge many years ago, before even Walnut Grove. I was 20, 27 years old, just wet behind the ears out of seminary, and my senior pastor left, and uh, I was going to be preaching. I had preached probably five, six times, and I was in the circle of older deacons, and one of them said, Lord, please use what Jim has to say. Help us to get something out of it. <laughs> I opened my eyes. I want to catch who said that. But they were too quick. They eluded me. In the face of the king. In our world today, there are things that come up that we have a choice. You're going to cave? Or are you going to stand up for what you believe? Now, I believe you can stand up for things and be very respectful. You don't have to say it in a hateful way. But there are things in life that we need to stand for, such as baptism. Baptism is commanded. It's not an option. If you're a follower of Jesus, you know it's commanded. And when it's time, you need to step into the waters of baptism. The Bible. It's God's word. 
It's inspired by God. It is the only book inspired by God. Jesus is the only way. There seems to be the one snag that gets everybody. There are many ways. No, there are not. The world says there's only one way. It's through Jesus. And he's available to everybody. That's the nice thing about it. Heaven is real. Heaven is a real place. And I believe that uh, we will be rewarded one day for that. And it goes on and on, the things that we believe. But we, you know, it takes trust. Proverbs 3, 5, and 6 says it so well. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge Him, and He will make your path straight. You cannot stand up for God if you do not trust Him. Because you'll have nothing if you don't. And yet God is there, and He says, trust me. 1 Corinthians 15, 58. Therefore, my brothers, stand firm. Let nothing move you. Always give yourselves fully to the work of the Lord, because you know your work of the Lord is not in vain. You may be at work, and you may have co-workers, and they may make fun of your faith, but you keep hanging in there. You keep doing what you've got to do, because I know in the past, I've stood up for myself at work or at sports, and a couple years later, people have said, Jim, don't tell anybody, but I need some advice from you. Because you were always consistent in your faith. And I need it now in my life. So you never know. Years down the road, someone may come to you and say, you were always firm. You always believed. I need help now. And God will allow you to work in their lives. The fourth thing we see, verses 19 to 24, and that is a courageous action. The king is out of his head with anger. You ever never known someone like that? He says, I... I want to make an example of these guys. And I want you to heat that furnace to seven times as hot as it can get and throw them in. Don't even take the courtesy to take their turbans off, their cloaks, anything. Sandals, just throw them in. I am upset. And, and these guys are still cool. None of them has said, whoa, whoa, whoa wait, 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 wait. Uh, give me one more chance. I, I'll, I'll go and I'll bow. No. They're cool as cucumbers. And they let them wrap them. They let them pick them up. The strongest guys that were there. He says the strongest, meanest guys chucked them in the furnace. And, and I kind of sensed that it was kind of a down furnace. It wasn't just a straight in furnace. It was kind of like throw them off the cliff into the furnace. And, and, and as they threw them in, the, the flames are so hot that they lapped and they just, they just destroyed the lives of those mean, strong guys, and they died. And that's how hot it was. And yet I don't know how the king was able to come over. And he looked inside, and he realized that there were not three, but there were four. Now what I find is interesting is that it didn't take long for the king to get up from his chair and look over the side, and he realizes there are four. And, and I realized that God never leaves us alone. It wasn't like he was, they were there for like five, ten minutes and all of a sudden, poof, someone appears. As soon as he looks over, he goes, hey, didn't we throw three in there? Yeah. Well, there's four. And the fourth one looks like the son of the gods. So there must have been something about that fourth one was just, wow, amazing. So when you're in struggle, when you're being persecuted, when you are feeling like you're all alone, you're not. God is there. He is with you. He walks every step of the way, and he never leaves you alone. That is so cool. Because I think that if this world tarries any longer, and God allows us to go through some of the tribulation time, we're going to have to hang on to him. And he's going to be there for us. And we're going to have to toughen up. We're going to have to say, you know what? There are some things I need to let go of. Because I love God more than I love this world. Are you ready? Can you stand with Jesus? If your push comes to shove and you have an angry king or someone in your face, will you cave? Or will you say, even if my God does not rescue me, I will never, ever do what you're asking me to do. 2 Timothy 1.7 For the Spirit of God does not give us a spirit of timidity, but gives us a spirit of power, love, 
and self-control. And the last thing we see here, I'm getting close on time, is they experience God's blessing. So the king looks over and he says, hey, how come there's four of those guys? Come on out, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, and bring that guy with you as well. Uh, there's no record of the guy coming out, but Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they come out, and it's amazing. It's amazing. The king blesses them and says, you were ready to stand up for your faith. God protected you. He applauds their faith. He reinstates them as representatives of the government. He sends out a royal edict saying, and I, I love this. <laughs> if anybody says anything bad, cut them into pieces and knock their houses down to rubble. <laughs> I mean, what an edict. It just shows you how crazy this guy was. God blesses them for their faithfulness. I know people today say, oh, God, you know, he, we shouldn't do it for blessing. God wants to bless us for our faithfulness. And through that process, God sends a message that we are servants that are serving him. Matthew 25, 21. Good job, my good and faithful servant. You have been faithful with a few things, and now I will put you in charge of many things. God is calling the church to act. I don't know about you, but I'm sick and tired of just being the minority out of town all the time. That's why I go door to door. Our cookie campaign's going really well. And as I was thinking about this morning, I was thinking the reason I like to go door to door, well, with cookies, but in general, is because I get to stand up and declare myself. I knock at the door. Hi, I'm Jim. I'm just out here hanging around. <laughs> okay, do you have anything to say? No, I just thought I'd come and meet you. Slam the door, call the cops, I mean, you pick one of those things. <laughs> Hi, I'm Jim, I'm from Cedarburg Church. And we just want to bless the community today. And we're handing out free cookies. Free cookies, what do you mean? Yeah, we just want to say we love you guys. Why? Because, well, we're starting a new church, it's in the Christian elementary school, and, and we love to share about our faith in God. That is so cool. I don't, I don't get to do that around my neighborhood. Now, door to door may not be your thing, but you got to find something where you are actively sharing who you are and what is the love of your life. I should say who. So God is really calling us to think about how many times during a week do you stand up and count and be counted for Jesus? Think of last week. Did you talk about Jesus at all? Your love for God. That is a shame. The church should be out there and wherever you can, wherever event you're at, if the Holy Spirit's speaking to you, you it's nothing more than just God bless you. But it gets the ball rolling and someone says, thank you. And then they ask you later, do you believe in God? Oh, wow. Drive a truck through that one. And we say, yeah, I do. And we just change subject. No. No longer. Let's, let's change the rules of the game. We engage. And we stand up and be counted. My last church, a lady said, uh, after a year of me preaching about baptism, mentioning it from the front, she said, Lord, Lord, she said, today, if this week, if Jim calls at all about anything, I'll take that as a sign that I should be baptized. It took her a whole year to get to this point. But wouldn't you know it? I called. I didn't call it a baptism. I called it something else. And she said, okay, got me. And she came into the waters of baptism. She acted on her love for Christ. Are you ready to act? It may not be baptism, but it's something else. Jesus is calling you. There's someone at work that needs to hear the good news because they're going through a tough time. Somebody in your life needs to hear about Jesus. You have the lifeline. Will you throw it out to them? Today, we have two, as I mentioned before, I think I mentioned once or twice, Justin and Travis, and they're going to come and get baptized. So I'm going to take my microphone off so I don't get electrocuted. <laughs> and if they would join me over at the tank, you could just watch from your chair, or you could come over and... Uh, 
Get close. Justin's going to share just briefly, and then Mike Plank has a verse for him. I do. And then we'll baptize Justin. Go ahead, Justin. Okay, this is quick. It's not as long as I thought. but So I just wanted to share with you guys all a little bit. Um, just want to let you know how great God is. I've had a really tough year, lots of struggles, but one thing I did was trust in God. Amen. Um, I could have easily turned away and just done my thing, but instead I decided to uh, start reading the Bible, um, praying more, praying lots. Um, to be yeah, completely honest with you, I am who I am now, today, through the grace of God. Amen. Um, what, basically what I'm saying is whatever you're going through, nothing's too big or too small to overcome. Yes. Um, one of the biggest things today is, too, is I get to baptize my son, um, which is Amazing. thankful. So I'm, I'm going to do it all over again, every struggle I had. That's it. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. So going on with that, I have a verse for Justin. It's James chapter 1, verses 2 to 4, and it says, Consider it pure joy, my brothers and sisters, whenever you face trials of many kinds, because you know that the testing of your faith produces perseverance. Let persever uh, perseverance finish its work so that you may be mature and complete and lacking, not lacking anything. That's the verse I chose for you. Thanks, Mike. <laughs> all right, Justin, let me ask you a couple questions. First of all, do you love the Lord Jesus with all your heart? Absolutely. And do you wish to serve him for the rest of your life? Yes. Upon the confession of your faith, I baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. So if you didn't know, Travis accepted Jesus. Uh, was it uh, New Year's Day? Uh, New Year's Day. New Year's Day, yes, exactly. So and Travis said he wanted to be baptized as well because he knew that was the right thing to do. So pretty cool for a 10-year-old. Cool. We're really proud of Travis. Right on. So you have a verse for Travis? I do. I have uh, Joshua 1, verse 9. It says... Travis, be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid or troubled. The Lord your God will, is with you wherever you go. Amen. Okay, Travis. So you know how we practice it. There we go. Come on forward here a little bit. So we're hoping we don't throw him right out of the tank. Right? <laughs> <laughs> Make sure you get that for YouTube. <laughs> okay, Travis, let me ask you a couple questions. Do you love the Lord Jesus with all your heart? Yes. And do you wish to serve him for the rest of your life? Upon the confession of your faith, Baptist, uh, Travis, your dad and I baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Alright, so you can go back, we've got three more songs, and we'll see you at the end. <laughs>